All right, here we go. We've got Freytag's theory of dramatic structure. And what we're going to do is you're going to see this thing looks like a triangle or a pyramid. You've probably seen it before. It visually shows you the tension of the story. So we start off and we're nice and easy in the exposition here. It's going to give you all that intro information. Who? Uh, we've got Rainsford. What's going on? They're on a hunting exposition. Where are they? They're on the way to the Amazon. All of those WH questions, who, what, where, when, why, that's what you're getting in the exposition. So then I add this little category called a 1.5 because some kind of catalyst basically gets the ball rolling. Without this event, nothing else would happen. So this really kind of throws us in gear. Gets the story started. Without the catalyst, wouldn't be there. Without uh, Toy Story and Woody and Buzz getting lost in the pizza place, they wouldn't have their adventure, right? So, moving on, we have the rising action. And this is basically, think about this as like, you're on a roller coaster, and all of those steps leading up to the final moment when whoosh, you're down the roller coaster. Each one of these increments increases the tension of the story, builds the suspense to finally the climax. And I like to call this the Rubicon because it's that's a really, really weird word. And people don't just go around saying Rubicon. But basically all that means is it's the point of no return. So does the good guy die? Does he live? Does somebody fall off a cliff or do they not? You can't escape once this has been passed. That sets everything in motion for the falling action. These are the direct consequences. It's the results. So if the Seahawks won, it's the score. It's the results. And finally, we have the denouement. Denouement. The French came up with this awesome word. Denouement. And I don't say resolution, because sometimes the story is not resolved. Sometimes they've left you on a cliffhanger, and you have to tune in next week to see the end of your story. Sometimes it's not a happy ending where everything's resolved. Sometimes it's a horrible ending where everybody is dead. So, denouement basically means wrap it up. We're ready to go. It's done. End of book. So if we look at the dangerous game, there's some pretty specific things going on in the dangerous game. Our exposition is all about Rainsford. And the story doesn't just come out and say, like, Rainsford is a great hunter dude who wrote some books and has these opinions about animals. No. We get that information through things like dialogue, when he's having that conversation with Whitney. Uh, we get that in the description of um, how he's talking back to Whitney. Of, oh, no, of course not. He doesn't ever feel for those uh, poor jaguars. He doesn't even think about it. The catalyst had this dude not fallen off the boat. The story wouldn't have happened if he would have stayed in his chair and not been a doofus and fallen off the side of the boat, everything would have been peachy keen and he would have been able to go on his hunting exposition. So that set all of these things in motion. We have him uh, finding the blood stains on the beach. We had him finding the mansion. We had him 
uh, thrust into this position where he's getting hunted. Uh, and we had all those descriptions. One to three nights of being hunted. He, uh, he killed one of the dogs. He got the general's shoulder, but not him. He killed uh, Ivor, the, the Igor big Russian dude. But still, he was hunted and hunted and hunted. Up until... What was the Rubicon? In this case, I would argue it's the point where Rainsford literally jumps off the cliff. Once he has stepped off the cliff, there he can't defy the laws of gravity and go back to the cliff. No, he is going down. So with that, we have all the consequences of, um, well, we know from the end that Rainsford had to swim. Um, that's a horrible spelling, but, you know, you just gotta follow along. We had the general, um, making his dinner. Uh, we had him being a sad sack, talking to his dogs, like, good luck next time. Um, we had all these attitudes of, um, let's fix that real quick. Good luck, not good luck. I don't know what that is. Um, the general... Going through his, oh, woe is me, that bum, he cheated. Well, I'll get a better prey next time. To then, finally, we have another little conflict here, kind of in between the falling action and the denouement, where Rainsford and the general go to fisticuffs. They fight. And whoever wins gets to have the nice, comfy bed. And for our wrapping it up, wrap, wrap it up, it was Rainsford who got to enjoy the mansion. <laughs>